What is up team? Chuck with Traders War Room and I'm back at you with another video. Listen, this is your Sunday Motivator and I got a great video for you and we're going to talk about a lot of things upcoming this week. But right now I need you to like, share and subscribe and I need you to come along with us on this journey, man. Check the description tab. All the links to all the content covered in this video are there and a lot of helpful tips to make you a better and more successful trader in the long run. Listen, the end goal is always to be better prepared today than we were yesterday and we do that through a share learning environment now if that sounds good and you're ready then follow me and let's go to war together Trey's War Room wants to remind the viewer that all content on this channel are for education and entertainment purposes only you are responsible for every move you make in the stock market have fun tread cautiously but definitely go to war and let's get it. All right, without further ado, let's get at it, man. You know how we roll the buzz report. So let's talk about what's hot and what's not in the stock market pushing us into this week. All right, so here's how your market's closed on Friday, man. A bloodbath, man. Definitely not a good day in the market. And a lot of us were feeling it. I was seeing some of the posts on social media. So definitely we're all looking for some sort of rebound from last week's bloodbath. All right, and some of the movers and the shakers, man, CEI, man, that was on the watch list. I see Apple, ENDP, I see banging, okay, Echo was good, Affirm, AFRM, man, I saw a lot of people making money on that one, and ENDP, some losers, Cavill, THCP, MRSN, and APLS, and we're going to talk about one of these particular ones, which is our stock of the week, and that is IC. Now, we haven't seen a five-day market like this in a while, but I want you to look at that, man. What do you see in common with all of these numbers there? Red, man. Definitely. For the five-day, every single sector was down, man. So I'm definitely looking towards this week and next week to see some sort of rebound from it coming down so much. Some are going to do better than others, but I cannot see us rolling back into this week without having a little bit of green. And these are the orders filled by Fidelity customers. Remember, I use Fidelity. I like them. They're one of my big brokers that I use. But this is just a glimpse, man. All the main brokers out there have probably seen a very similar one. So if you got a picture of one of your brokers, look at the top orders filled by that particular broker. And I bet they're very similar to this one. And we see Apple, Big News, AMC, and AFRM as we talked about. Here's our IPO watch. Now we're starting to see some more IPOs coming in. We hadn't seen so many coming in the past few weeks due to earning report. And not a lot of companies like to push their IPOs when there's huge earning reports. Now that earnings are starting to slow down again until we go back into earnings season with the next quarter, you're going to see more companies deciding to push their IPOs. So check them out, do some DD. But you know how I like to roll on IPOs, man. It's a buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing, in my opinion. Some of these will do better than others, but you gotta be cautious because they'll spike up and they'll tank just as quick. Your top headlines, okay, companies are now issuing more stock than they did at the top of the internet bubble, and here's why that matters. We're gonna go into that in a little more detail so that you guys understand that. And 9-11 changed air travel, so will COVID, 19 do the same so definitely the air companies have been fluctuating you know you see spikes and things of this nature but there's definitely a lot of buzz going around especially with mandatory vaccinations for people getting on airplanes and workers and things of this nature so definitely something we need to pay attention to in the travel and leisurely activity type of industries now we're gonna cover this very quickly, man. I got the link down there to Market Watch. You can go in there, check the description tab and click on it and read it for yourself. But we're gonna go over it just real quick. And basically record stock issuance is not necessarily bearish if it's accompanied by high levels of buybacks and mergers and acquisitions. So that's those key terms, okay? When the companies are issuing you know, buyback programs, you see a lot of times the stock will spike up because it's a bullish type of trend. And mergers and acquisition, as long as the money that these stocks are making, a lot of times they're not pushed out dividends because they're using it for research and development and things of that nature. And if they're using it to buy in and merge and acquisition good companies and things of that nature, that's another thing that will push stocks going in the right direction. So we need to pay attention to it. 
And I told you I'm not going to bore you with all the details. I'm going to leave it here so you guys can pause and kind of read on your own. But basically, it's just talking about stock market bulls are needlessly worrying about the recent record pace of new stock issuance. In fact, when viewed properly, the current pace of stock issuance is actually neutral for the stock market, if not slightly bullish. So definitely pay attention to it. Look at the content, check out the resource and go and do your own DD on this. But definitely interesting read and it kind of gives you an understanding of the inner workings into the market. All right, now let's quickly go in on review on the alerts for last week, okay? Listen, I had a football game this on Saturday. I went out to a training event for the Army on Saturday evening, and I had family time on Friday, so I didn't get to push this out. So I want to push this out now so that I'm being transparent with you guys on everything that I got into and how I did. Friday was not a good day for me, just letting you know, as it wasn't a good day for most people. But that's how we roll. We take the good and the bad, and we make money in the long run. So as you see, we had basically 26 trades for the entire week. Okay, we're still in seven swings. On Friday, we had zero wins and three losses, man. I got out of some positions and I took some L's. A couple of them expired worthless that I should have got out earlier, but I thought that they would turn around and they didn't. So lessons learned, okay? You always gotta secure that portfolio. But I failed on those two ones, so I kind of got to bite the, the bullet on that one. But overall, for the week, we had 13 winners, six losers, and not a bad ending the week. We're still 65% up. And some of our real killers, the ones that we get in, the Disney and the Genie, those banged hard for us and made a lot of money, which took any of our losses and made it so that we didn't finish the week in a negative position and we ended up going positive. So as long as your winners are making more money than the ones that are losing, you're doing something right, okay? So a big takeaway from there, as long as you're getting into good, solid plays and you're making more money in the long run, you're doing something right, okay? You're going to take L's. That just happens with being in the stock market game, but you got to make sure your L's are minimal and compared to your wins that should be maximized. All right, now, not a big week of earnings, but there are some significant ones, okay? I got them highlighted with the yellow boxes like I always do. We're paying attention to Oracle. We're paying attention to Volk. You know, sea changes coming up. Fuel cell, that's a big one that people got a lot of push on there, okay? We got some Skillsoft. We got some Weber, okay? Definitely got our eye on a couple of these ones. Could see some good moves and things of that nature. And also, some of these have enough pull in a particular market or a particular industry that other ones will follow along with them you know fuel cell we're thinking clean energy stuff of that nature so if fuel cells are moving very well maybe something else in clean energy will be moving along as sympathy because of the fuel cell movement so you need to pay attention to that and understand when things are hidden if that stock is not hidden or it's not doing the direction that you want it to go maybe something in the same industry or sector is doing something that is all right so our first stock that we're looking at is ORCL. Now, Oracle has been a popular one, and we're definitely seeing why. Looking like it's on an uptrend, and I could definitely see this going up. And as I'm looking at how it closed, we look like we got a little inside bar with a downward hammer. So, definitely paying attention to this. It could go either way, but if I had my way, especially if earnings are positive, I believe that we would see this one going up at least into the earnings call, and especially afterwards if they did fairly well. All right, and we're looking at Volt now. Now, Volt's been kind of on a downtrend lately, and it's a relatively inexpensive stock, but I could definitely see this one pushing up and seeing maybe above $4.50, especially on some good numbers and some good PR, but I would not be surprised if we saw this testing back in the $3.50 area. So this one's kind of a 50-50. Definitely have to see what it does in pre-market and see if there's money flow and some buying pressure going in. Now, fuel cell, definitely you can see that it's on a downward trend and we're getting all sorts of sell signals, but fuel cell is one that a lot of people are into and it definitely falls in line with Biden's administration's clean energy plan. So especially if they can show that they got some good numbers coming in, some good future growth potential with like new contracts and things of that nature, fuel cell could take off and we could definitely see this thing go very quickly. A-L-O-T. Now, I don't know much about this company, but definitely we're kind of on an upswing with a recent downtrend. But the thing I want you to pay attention to is looking at that volume. It looks like the volume is kind of dwindling 
out and everything like that. Now, definitely doesn't pay attention and we could see some spikes, but pay attention to the volume and the buying pressure on this one particularly. Now, skill craft, not to be confused with skills, okay? Definitely has our interest, okay? We see that it recently came on a high peak and didn't go all the way up to all-time highs, but definitely came back to where it started before its last run. It's been consolidating hard, so this has my interest. I'd like to see what this does in pre-market on Monday, but I think that this is we're going to see this one do fairly well, and I like where the NACD is at. looks like it's going to maybe curl down a little bit, but I think it'll probably cross back up, and I think that this is going to be fairly bullish moving into Monday. Now, Weber is an interesting one, right? Everyone has, or at least has ate something on a Weber grill, man. Weber, you know, Weber grills are known to be the best of the best, okay? You know, they're right. I got myself one of the big boy round Weber grills, and these things are awesome, okay? It's definitely been kind of coming back down on the down, downward climb from its IPO. It looks like it recently IPO'd here, too. And so we're starting to see that it's kind of hidden a before low so i wouldn't be surprised if this comes back up a lot of people have been buying grills and getting back to outdoor activities and things of that nature and weber's one gonna reap the benefits of those so i think this will be fairly bullish moving into earnings season for them all right team now we're moving into our stock of the week man and the stock of the week is one that was banging last week and had a lot of attention okay it's none other than ic so let's take a look at this stock and see what the company has in store for us so let's check out ic now we can see ic been floating around that nine dollar area that between that nine and ten dollar area for a minute had some great news and we saw a big catalyst that pushed it up to like the fifteen dollars to fifty three cent area okay then a pullback as normal from any type of rise you know definitely is this a case of too much too soon i don't know but they got a lot of board of directors they got a lot of plans they got a lot of good research out there that could keep this up where it's at and continue to go higher so let's check out the company and look at a few things and kind of get a general idea on what this potentially might do this next week in the coming future all right so looking at the quick bio we see there's a biopharmaceutical company the company is engaged in discovery and development of treatment options for retinal diseases okay that's diseases with the eye the company developing both therapeutic products candidates and age-related retinal diseases and gene therapy product candidates for orphan inherited retinal diseases IRDs. Now, one thing I want you to take note on this, okay, is the big money is in the age developing treatments, okay? So people are going to get old. That's just no, a, you know, a known thing, right? But the treatments for getting people old that can still see and things of that nature, that's huge. And there's a lot of big money to be pushed in there. Old people want to be able to see just like they did when they were younger and maybe if not as good as when they were younger something better than what they have now you know so a lot of money is going to be pushed in here and if they can be successful with their products man this could go skywalk skyrocket because this is a big ticket deal man a lot of the older generation we're talking you know 50 to 80 things of that nature they want to see better the eyes degenerate things of that nature so we have to pay attention a lot of money going to be pushed into this okay and doing a quick look at their company website, man, they got a very interactive company website. It looks good. They got a lot of board directors. We're going to dig into it real quick. So the website looks solid. It's not just one of those companies that's just putting something out with like a Wix.com thing. And they got a lot of money being pushed into this company. So here's their story. I'm not going to bore you with this. I'm going to let you leave it here. You can pause this. You can check it up on your own. But basically, they're an innovative pharmaceutical company that focuses on discovery and development of treatments for retinal diseases with significant unmet medical needs. Here's what they're doing. Again, I'm going to let you pause this, read it on your own, or check the website out in the description. The website's right there. Do your own DD, look at this company, and make an informed decision on whether you're bullish or bearish on this particular company. Now, one thing I noticed as a pair compared to other companies that you know, skyrocketed in biopharmaceutical, man, they have a lot of backing. These are just the core leadership, right, the top ones. But, man, their leadership is like the who's who in the eye doctor type of research and development 
you know, areas. So definitely pay attention to this when a lot of the great minds get together, man. You know, we're talking about a company that definitely has a lot of pressure and a lot of people see a need and a desire for their particular work. Here's their board of directors. And a little understanding on their main focus with this geographic atrophy, okay? The pathophysiology based on the age rated molecular degeneration and it's being the most widespread cause of irreversible loss of vision functions, okay? So definitely pause this, pay attention, dig into the website. And here's their history, and you got a little bit of stats and things of that nature. So, again, not going to waste your time. You guys know what to do. Get in the description, click the link there, go to the website, dig into it, and make an informed decision. Now, I want to talk to you about the principles for success again, because I failed this week on following my own principles of success. But look, I'm human. We all make mistakes, man. We all get a little bit of greedy. We think things are going to go one way and then they go the opposite way. Then we get caught off guard. Life happens, things of that nature. But when the bad things happen, it's good perspective to get us back out of that complacency and get us back into the understanding of what we need to do. And we need to follow our core principles and stay disciplined to our plans. And today we're going to talk about securing. So when we're talking about securing, man, the big thing is we're securing capital, okay? We're securing our portfolio. We're making sure that our wins outweigh our losses and things of that nature. And there's a couple ways we can do this, but one of the big ones is via stop losses, okay? Now, if you see SL on any type of thing, that's shorthand, but it means stop loss, okay? So price targets or PTs, those are great, man. Those are things that we think the stock is going to go. And if it hits this price, we're going to trim out or sell completely out at that particular point. But sometimes the stocks don't hit those or they hit it barely, but not enough to trigger, right? So we are ending up into our stop loss area because it rises up quick and then it shoots down very fast. Now, sometimes stop losses, you can adjust them and things of that nature, and you might miss out, right? So your stop loss hits because it takes a big tank down, and all of a sudden, then it jumps right back up, right? And that happens, okay? But you can't go FOMO or fear of missing out and think about jumping back in because that's a recipe for disaster. So sometimes when it hits your stop loss, you just have to take that L and you have to be like, you know what? I'm staying disciplined. My stop loss for this is 30 cents if it dips below 30 cents, I'm out, and it does whatever it does afterwards, and I move on to next, because I promise you there will be another one, we see that all the time, and we lose more money when we FOMO into things based off of not securing our portfolio, and we also lose a lot more money when we don't use our stop losses, because example with me and BA, man, I thought BA was going to recoil and my contract ended up going out worthless man $50 entrance or you know 50 cents per contract entrance into there you know $50 for 100 shares and I ended up losing it all okay so I didn't stick to my stop loss of 30 cents and I should have but lessons learned complacency out of the way I'm going back in Monday fresh regenerated and I'm going to stay true and disciplined to my normal rules okay so I suggest you all secure your own rules and you stay disciplined as well okay because in the long run staying disciplined and consistent will make you more money than FOMOing into things and trying to ride the wave up on things that are just eventually going to spike down all right team and we're coming to the end of the video and as always you know just a big thank you guys for showing support and love now listen this week might be a little odd as i'm out training at fort carson in the beautiful train area that they have in the middle of nowhere and i'm about to show you a picture i'm still going to try to send alerts and as much as i can but uncle sam says i got to be here so you know what mission first and we take care of that and we get back to normal all right now at traders war room we always look at the stock market like the war zone Stocks and sectors, those are our battles, and we do it together as a team, man. Attack, conquer, and destroy, and we do that through a shared learning environment. Now, if that sounds good, then all I need you to do is ask yourself if you're ready. And if the answer is yes, then follow me, and let's go to war together, team. My living area for the next couple of weeks. A lot of beautiful sky, especially at nighttime, clear skies. But man, a lot of just nothing out here. So definitely give me some glove and things of that nature on the comments. And man, we'll get at it come market open on Monday and see what we got.